How's it going everybody? It's me Shane and I'm here to give you another Digimon Adventure 2020 episode review and recap. This is episode 64. Two more episodes to go y'all. Today's episode is called The Angels of Determination. Uh, as always, I'm just going to have to ask you please give me a like, comment, subscribe. We have been going, technically I've been doing these videos since episode 5, 4 or 5 and that's okay. Because you know what, after this thing is done, I'll go back and I'll review episodes 1 through 3 in retrospect of the whole entire series. Because this series, man, this has been really good. Very enjoyable. And uh, this episode, wow. So I was contemplating on how I was going to do this. Because lately, I've just been kind of not going play by play with episode with, with a lot of my reviews. And just saying what happened and talking about some of the cool and key parts. Um... I'll do a semi recap of what's of what's happened. It shouldn't really take all that long, really, right? Right? Because what we what we have is, is that uh Patamon and Takaru, they have a dream, but it's not really a dream, you know. The Devimon is speaking to them in a vision, saying that the thing that stirred him, that ignited the blood in his body, that got him, you know, focused on evolution and his machinations, the thing that formed him it's starting to move with the great catastrophe. And the great catastrophe does not care about hope or despair. It's going to take away everything and put it in a white nothing. That's a white void. And of course, Takaru and Padma say they're going to be the ones to stop it. And he's like, hey, I'm going to watch. So, and, and during this time, we do get Devimon going from Devimon, Neo Devimon, Don Devimon. That's D A N, Don Devimon. Not Dun. Well, I'm sorry. Dun Devimon. Not Dan Devimon. <clears throat> and eventually, they get to a railway. We get our favorite Trailmon going past. But then on a little tiny, like, car. Like, tiny rail car. There's a car and Tailmon. They join along. They are brought up to speed about the dream that the others had. And he's saying maybe this is a... Maybe Devimon was being led by the Great Catastrophe. It looks like it influenced him to research evolution and break the laws of nature, which led into destruction, which was also used by the Vademon to revive Millenniumon. And Millenniumon just wanted to destroy everything. It had no ambition. So, you know, Tailmon, she's, she's musing over all this while the other, you know, everyone went on their, their crest quest. We got Soren, Taichi, and Bergamon coming in. We got Mimi and Joe coming in on Mechanorimon. Um, Yamato is on Garurumon, but uh, Koshiro comes in on top of Kabutomon. They just happen to be there at the same time. And they're all coming. They're, everyone's going back to the uh, tree, Wise Man's tree, the tree of knowledge, I believe. But then they are given a. And, and we, we are actually privy to seeing Argomon Ultimate. In front of this giant ball that has all these red lights on it. it looks very matrixy in a way. <clears throat> and um just scrolling through my notes. My notes. And they get a call from Gerbemon and uh Wisemon. They're being attacked because when we saw uh Argomon ultimate with the ball, we also see Thousands and thousands of soundbird mon. Remember, soundbird mon are just bats. And they're fluttering all over the world. And they're all heading straight for the world tree. And they start attacking with their supersonic screeches. And their screeches are making the Mechanorimon go crazy. So the Mechanorimon are attacking while the other Digimon that they're in the world tree are going underground to hide. Gurrimon, Searchmon, and uh, Wisemon are attacked. But of course, a beam comes and knocks at the. The cool part is the beam hits the Mechanorimon but kills the Soundbird Mons that are inside of them. And it's Pegasmon or Pegasus Mon for the uninitiated. And the Mechanorimon are getting back up. It's looking kind of bad, but Search Mon is able to interfere with interfere with the sound that's going on from the uh, Soundbird Mon to keep the Mechanorimon down. Uh, as the, the two youngest of the Chosen Children try to head towards the center to stop the Soundbird Mon from attacking the Crest Monoliths. Out of nowhere, the Soundbird Mon able to take the junk data from the side and reconstruct it into like these fighting polygonal beings. They look like 
Wire Man. If you uh, anybody play Smash, you know uh, Little Max Wire Man form. They look like those. And unfortunately, there's enough of them to go and attack, go and attack Gurrymon and Searchmon, while the two youngest children, children with Wisemon, trying to move forward. They're in attacks too, but a timely Giga Destroyer and uh, and a timely combination attack from Wergarumon and Kabutomon save Gurrymon and Searchmon and Taichi saves the two youngest ones. They're heading straight for the crest just to make sure nothing happens because just like with Burpmon trying to attack the crest, they want to make sure nothing breaks these things. Uh, meanwhile, the other children catch up because it's just a mad dash to destroy the sound Birdmon. We get midder evolutions from Palmon, Kakumon. Uh, I feel like I'm missing somebody. No, just, yeah, Ikakumon and Togemon. Bergemon is the one that leads the attack, and they're easy. The sound Birdmon are, are rookie levels. They're easily able to destroy these things. <clears throat> And one of the key things that did happen was Kabu Kabutomon, really. Kabuterimon uh praises Search Monster, you know, you did a good job, and that was lovely to me. Uh the youngest children children with Tai Chi, they make it to the crest, but this time all the crests are glowing up with the colors that each individual child has. Wisemon says that it's more or less they're more or less resonating with each of them. <clears throat> But now, suddenly, all the bird, sound bird mod are acting weird. They all move around, and they're starting to coalesce into one form. And this Digimon was hinted at earlier on when Telmon was wondering, was thinking about what started the Great War of Light and Darkness. They are coalescing into the Digimon known as Deathmon. Uh... Renamed in English to Ghoulmon, which is such a stupid name. Deathmon has the Deathmon name for a reason. And um, so the translation on this is kind of weird. And I, I wrote it down word for word. It said, you know, it's a mission why Deathmon will try to destroy darkness, which it belongs to. However, its existence could be a uh, omen to the Great Catastrophe. And, you know, in the face of that disaster, you know, if you're driving the world mad and just let out a massive scream like a multi-beam attack and i'm gonna show you the digimon in exactly two seconds and it's you know the thing i really like is that sora and taichi remember this silhouette from episode five that is the silhouette of deathmon and remember they did get to take a look into the past thanks to uh i think it was holy birdmon or was the holy the, the holy phoenix digimon um Deathmon technically looks like this. And he's a mega form. Mega Digimon, completely massive. But as as they the Soundbird Mon all coalesce into this thing, it goes from gray to black. And that is actually a totally separate form. And as a matter of fact, and its eyes are red. Now that I wanna note that its eyes are red. Let me read you uh Deathmon's encyclopedia real quick. Uh, like Daemon, if you remember Daemon, Daemon was from the original uh, Digimon Adventure 02. That's a whole nother Digimon. I don't know if they're ever going to get to him, but it's an interesting Digimon. Interesting Digimon. Uh, Deathmon is a mega level Digimon, but it's also a Demon Lord. One of the, I want to say, seven Demon Lords. And it was originally, a, like Daemon was the original high ranking Angel Digimon, but it fell to the dark area. <clears throat> and is now... And one of the Demon Lord Digimon, even though it is a Demon Lord Digimon, it is different from all other Fallen Angel Digimon and Devil Digimon, and that it does not run the whole gambit of wickedness, but instead it's utmost care. It uses utmost care to maintain a position of neutrality. Remember, his name is Deathmon because it doesn't have to be a downer. Death comes for everything. Death comes for good or bad. So just like the name, it's a new it tries to be neutral. However, it is a terrifying Digimon and is told that at the time of the final battle, which 2020 reboot has done a lot to incorporate the encyclopedias into the story, and I appreciate that. Um, at the time of the final battle, it's I didn't know that. I thought that was a gray, but it's a white appearance. will change to jet black, which I showed you, and it will transform into a god of destruction. Uh, it fires arrows from that one massive eye and has eyes on the claws, which can also 
has a move of deep crimson called Eye Explosion. Deathmon was adopted from the winning Digimon entry from a web dot contest where they you basically make a digital pet and some they, it was adopted from that. But yeah, the Jet Black Death. And that's what this thing is. Now it is not just a neutral dig, uh, demon lord. It is a god of death. And suddenly, after it does his multi-beam, there are several lights around the ball near Argomon. They seem to go off for some reason. Uh, the somber Mon's mouths are open and they're screeching all around the world. All around the digital world. Because we are seeing all the Digimon they have met so far. I'm talking... Gravimon, Leomon is talking, doing the overview. So we see him first, but it's him and his crew, Gravimon, Olegmon, um, Machmon, Rebellimon, the Sea Digimon that we ran into earlier, um, the Burgermon with the Potato Mon. We do see uh, we see Lopmon, who's looking up with with their mouth mouth open, but they kind of their mouth closes. Looks like they kind of get a, a steeled resolve. Much like Leo Ma, because Leo Ma was saying, like, children, children said this was going to happen. And I'm going to have faith that they can beat this. I'm not going to waver in my faith. Another thing, we do see the, remember the Forest Baby Crew with the Hikari episode. Uh, we do see the Dino Crew, you know, with the giant head one, tiny head one inside of its mouth. And Tyrannomon. <clears throat> we see Mimi's Gatsumon and Golemon Crew. And we do see Edamon and Volcamon. So this is, everyone sees this. And I'm going to predict, if not next episode, no, episode after after the next one, everyone's probably going to join in and fighting. I would, I would hope so, because this is technically going to be the end of the world. So I would expect someone to join in. By the way, this series is, the, the first season is almost over. And Leomon has not died. Good job, Leomon. Excuse me. Uh, we also see Name Nene Nene <laughs> Namon and the other Digimon he was rolling with. They're all paying attention to this giant catastrophe. And suddenly this this massive mega Digimon grabs onto the tree, fires a complete eye beam straight through it, pushing back the children out on the ground and their Digimon and Looks like Taishi, Takaru, and Hikari and their Digimon are going to get wiped out. But nope. As soon as Leomon says, I'm going to have faith in them, we get shiny War Greymon with the Grey Shield up. We get Magna slash Holy Angelmon and Angelwoman. And they had their hands out blocking it. <clears throat> and the music, music starting to go up in the swell everyone's digi digivices i'm talking about all the children because now i thought they got blown back but they're all standing while the other three are in the air all the digivices are glowing their respective colors and they made a point of showing all this the animation on that was terrific the animation on deathmon is terrific as well like animation in this episode did not falter at any point even the cameos looked terrific <clears throat> and now we get a great narration from Wisemon, who basically name drops the name of the crest. He says, you know, the digital world, the children's reliability and sincerity allowed them to form a friendship with the Digimon. And we get nice flashbacks of all of their time hanging out with their digital partners. My favorite is Joe with the giant hammer. <coughs> and um, he says, the chosen one saved them with knowledge and nurtured them with courage and love. And he doesn't finish it. We get Angel Woman and Mag and uh, Holy Angelmon, Mon Angelmon. They, you know, <laughs> they say uh, that they kindled hope within the world. And Angel Woman says, you know, light and dark should both exist. They have to exist in order to make in order to make the world as light and dark. But in order for them to exist, there needs to be order and harmony. So the great, great catastrophe, which can even deceive evil, is what. Magna Angelman said, they're going to go ahead and wants it, want it to behold their light and hope. So we've name dropped all eight crests. Break the Chain is in full effect. The angels get to their mega evolutions. This, man, I'm glad that besides 
War Greymon and Metal Guru Mon, and even uh, Hercules Kabuterimon, their evolution looks great because Magna, I'm no, Holy Andromon, goes into his priest form and he's doing a Dragon Ball Z style power up, and that's how his his armor starts to form on him, and it looks terrific. Of course, he turns into Seraphimon, but before I show you these guys, but Angel Woman turns into Ophanimon, and her evolution is very Sailor Moon. Like the uh, the Holy Ring that's around her leg, it turns into a ribbon. The ribbons wrap around her, and they form her armor. That long metal skirt, the her javelin and her shield. Boy, it it it. Just the detail for this evolution. I'm glad it. Did. I'm glad it wasn't in 3D. I'm glad it was hand drawn. Look, amazing. And just just in case you don't know what he looks like, here's a boy, Seraphimon. Look at him. Now a lot of people prefer Godramon as the mega form. <sighs> we have so many weird animal beast creature like Digimon. I like it when we get something like this. I really, really do. Uh, let's go ahead and read him real quick. So Ravimon is, of course, a Seraph Digimon, Mega Level. He is a vaccine. And this guy, he's dressed in a holy armor that shines silver. And he has 10 golden wings. The highest uh, ranking of the angels. Do your research. <clears throat> and actually says right here, he's the highest ranked being among angel Digimon and the rules over all of them. Although his true face and personality is hidden behind the mask, and cannot be glimpsed it is a being closest to the being of good and quote quotation marks called God. And it's told that when it descends from for the final battle against evil beings, it will purify everything. Also, it is said that Daemon, the Digimon mentioned er earlier, was actually a Seraphimon that fell from the graces of the highest digital world point to the dark area. Uh yeah, so he has his move called Seven Heavens and Testament. Also known as Big Bang Testament, but <clears throat> yeah. And let's just take a look at my girl. I'm going to get you a better picture of her. Oh, wait, that, there we go. That is Ophanimon. Oh, wait, that's the dark form. That's Ophanimon right there, and that's the official artwork. Yeah, man, Ophanimon. So... Seraphimon, we first see him in the uh, technically Digimon movie for us in America, in the Western countries. But it was technically the second Digimon Adventure 2 movie. Let's say the second Digimon. It was just the Digimon Adventure 2 movie. It was where uh, Patamon turned into Seraphimon and Gatomon turned into Magna, Magna Dramon, known as Holy Dramon in Japanese. The pink dragon, yeah. And they were they were able to give the digi eggs of miracle and fate to V Mon and Terrier Mon to get the golden rapid mon and magna Dramon. So yeah, he's been around for a while. Well Fani Mon technically first showed up in Digimon Frontier because that story dealt with the three angel Digimon, Cherubimon, Ofani Mon, and uh oh god, Seraphimon. So that's when she first showed up. I prefer her over Magna Dramon, Holy Dramon. I like I like Pink Aragorn Dragon. He's fine. It's fine. I just again prefer the humanoid Digimon, especially with her line going from bipedal cat to giant lady to an even bigger lady. Which it's funny because their mega forms are they're they're pretty big, but they're like. Almost shorter than War Greymon. I couldn't tell because the, the ratio was off. He was forward and they were kind of behind. And as we all know, Mega Digimon of this series are freaking huge. They are massively huge. <clears throat> so, Deathmon tries to fire beams at them. Beams don't do anything to these guys. And, uh, what is my guy called? Seravimon fires seven heavens, which makes seven balls of light. Fires it right at him. His eye beam is colliding with the seven heavens. And Takaru's holding out that Digivice. Makes it break through it. And I tell you, I love this animation. Because it has one giant pupil, right? 
the pupil uh, goes from being dilated to, sh to shrinking. And, you know, it's being held back by the seven heavens. Here comes Ophanimon. It tries to fire two more beams from its hands. Ophanimon's cutting through it with her Eden's javelin and puts a massive hole in this thing. I'm saying if this thing is Godzilla size, she made a hole that's like a skyscraper within this Godzilla size evil Digimon. And that was that. They they killed this thing. This thing is breaking and falling apart into the Soundbird Mon. And all these Soundbird Mons, they're speaking. Everyone around the world can hear this. And it's saying, you know, I am the first cried by the catastrophe. I will echo around all. And when I finish my cry, it will begin, begin, begin. Argomon says, Be great catastrophe, begin. And the, the giant black ball starts to crack, emit a red light, and then breaks. And he calls it Negamon. Yeah, uh, Negamon. And when trying to find a picture of this thing, I actually did. It, it was featured in the new Digivice toy. And I did see it, but its name was question mark, question mark, question mark. I did do see pictures of it. But what we see inside of a white void is this little bulb thing. And the children, the chosen children, they were all celebrating like, so it's over, right? But by the time, by the time they're about to celebrate everything, they're all transported with the monolith crest in this little area that they were in. They're sent into another dimension that looks like space. And all their devices are glowing and the crest just shoot up into the space. And then suddenly they're all back. Now, according to their partners... They never left, but they were there to witness that. And then they look into the sky. Excuse me. Patamon and Takaru repeat what Devimon said. The white void. It's a white void. There's nothing. And that's where our episode ends. So next episode, they got to fight Argomon and see what's going on with this Negamon thing. Just, whew. The fact that it's not even really anything that's... Like, this is a brand new Digimon, and I applaud them for not rehashing Apoclamon, which they could have easily done. They could have easily just said, yeah, we're going to reboot everything. Just You get a new Devimon uh, saga. Cool, you get some other new stuff we'll put in, but we're going to bring up all this old stuff. No, they, it's this is pretty different. And I... Uh, yeah. I hope Leo Mai doesn't die. So, yeah, what can I say? Already, I also wrote some stuff down here. Great evolution sequence. Seeing priest mode on uh, Holy Andromon, that was amazing. Uh, Deathmon. One thing I want to say, the Holy Digimon, they speak, but their mouths don't move. So, like, Angelwoman and Magna Andromon, when they talk, words come out, but they don't move their lips. They're probably speaking the language of the angels that's probably translated for everybody, everyone to understand it. But yeah, um, I have to give this episode a solid 4. 4, 4.5. Because really, really good animation. Definitely, uh, it's nearing the penultimate. Like, it's, it's we're getting to a plateau. Because now, just like all things in this show, action doesn't stop and... We're, we're at the precipice. I do hope the ending for this entire series is not... Uh, one, I hope it's not a cliffhanger. And two, I hope it's not rushed. I I, I don't I don't know how they're going to beat this thing next episode. I'm going to predict... I thought they were going to 66. They might go to 67 because their only hope is Omega Mon. And maybe Omega Mon gets a brand new form like Omega Chosen Mode. Hopefully not merciful mode. I'd rather him get a brand new mode that incorporates all the other children and then just defeat the thing. Kind of like Susanomon. But that's what I think of this episode. Let me know what you thought of the episode in the comment section down below. I really appreciate your comments and I actually really do like hearing from you. Especially when you correct me if I got anything wrong. So, uh, again, when you send that comment, remember, give me a like. Give me a subscribe. It really helps out the channel. You know, we're, we're trying to do... Bigger and better things here, and I promise there's more stuff on the way. But as always, 
share the video so others can see what we're doing here. Remember, I do these for you guys every Sunday. I do promise I'm going to do uh, episode one, two, three uh, retrospective because now, and I hope everyone that was complaining before, now the things that happened early on, all this stuff makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense on that Argomon, the Great Catastrophe, are taking them serious because they were able to bust out the giant miracle from out of nowhere. And that is probably what made everything move faster for them. Why they kept trying to destroy the human world to get rid of them. Yeah. But as always, I appreciate you for showing up. Please be good, be blessed. Wash your hands, wear a mask. Be good to yourself and others. Please don't be a jerk. And I will definitely see you next time.